mitral stenosis on a chest x-ray. A chest x-ray may not be the best choice for the investigation of cardiac diseases, but it can still provide vital information for many cardiac conditions that can supplement the information provided by the other modalities. It still holds an important diagnostic value. It is therefore imperative for all health professionals to learn how to identify radiological features on chest x-rays that provide important information about the cardiac conditions. This video will provide you with valuable information to add to your knowledge. But before we do that, please take note of the approximate size and locations of cardiac chambers as shown on the normal x-ray. The outlines have been drawn on the x-ray for you to know where an anatomical structure is roughly located. Many of the drawn borders cannot be seen properly viewed on a normal chest x-ray because of the similar adjacent densities. Only borders that are adjacent to the lungs are visible, since the lungs provide an excellent contrast. The chest x-ray on the right is normal, and the x-ray on the left is an excellent teaching case. This patient has been diagnosed with mitral valve stenosis. The x-ray on the left shows the classical features of mitral valve stenosis, particularly the enlargement of the left atrium. Mitral stenosis is defined as the narrowing of the mitral valve which restricts blood flow from the left atrium to the left ventricle. This results in elevated left atrial pressure which is transmitted back to the pulmonary veins and eventually to the right side of the heart. The condition gradually causes the enlargement of the left atrium and produces features which can be recognised on chest x-rays. Classic radiographic features of mitral stenosis include left atrial enlargement, enlarged left atrial appendage, splaying of carina, cardiomegaly, and pulmonary vascular cephalization. Let's discuss these features one by one. Left atrial enlargement. It is important to remember that left atrial enlargement is not always caused by mitral stenosis. It can have many causes, and mitral stenosis is only one of them. A classic diagnostic feature of left atrial enlargement is the double density sign, which is clearly visible on the x-ray on the left. Double density sign is also known as the double right heart border, or double contour sign. On the normal x-ray on the right, you can see there is only one right heart border which marks the right side of the right atrium. The x-ray on the left shows two distinct borders. One is created by the enlarged left atrium and the other is created by the right atrium. The double density sign is created when the right side of the enlarged left atrium pushes into the adjacent right lung and becomes visible as a second contour on the right side on frontal chest x-rays, as in this case. You can see that the left atrium is so large that it is pushing the adjacent lung even further than the right atrium. The double density sign almost always represents an enlarged left atrium, although a similar appearance can be sometimes caused by the right superior pulmonary vein in some patients even if they do not have an enlarged left atrium. If the double density sign is present, then the oblique left atrial measurement can also be taken from the midpoint of the left main bronchus to the right border of the left atrium. Sometimes the term left atrial diameter is used for this, which may be controversial for many. A measurement of over 6 cm confirms a left atrial enlargement. Enlarged left atrial appendage Enlarged left atrial appendage is shown as a convex bump just below the main pulmonary artery. This is also known as third mogul sign. The left cardiac border just below the main pulmonary artery should be plain or concave on a normal chest radiograph. This area represents left atrial appendage. Convexity of the left atrial appendage contour is a direct sign of left atrial enlargement. Splaying of the carina. Widening of the carinal angle to over 90 degrees 
is an indirect sign of left atrial enlargement. The subcarinal angle on this radiograph is roughly 104 degrees. This happens because the left atrium is located directly inferior to the carina. The enlarged left atrium pushes the main bronchi away from each other, increasing the subcarinal angle. Again, splaying of the carina can also be caused by other pathologies. Cardiomegaly. The chest x-ray on the left shows cardiomegaly. The cardiothoracic ratio is used to determine the cardiac size on chest x-rays. The cardiothoracic ratio is measured on a PA chest x-ray and is the ratio of maximal horizontal cardiac diameter to maximal horizontal thoracic diameter, inner edge of ribs or edge of pleura. A measurement of over 0.5 is usually considered abnormal, meaning cardiomegaly is present. Pulmonary vascular cephalization. Cephalization refers to the redistribution of blood into the upper lobe vessels. The upper lobe vessels become larger than the lower lobe vessels, which is opposite of what should be visible on a normal X-ray. This X-ray is probably not the best example to show pulmonary vascular cephalization, but there are other videos on our website and on our YouTube channel for the topic. Thanks for watching.